You have a desire, which can be an idea. It's an inspiration. It's inspired. Desire is inspired. Now, it can also be motivated by the contrast of your day-to-day -day experience. Let's say something happens, as Abraham often says, if you know what you don't want, you know what you do want. It's one of their statements. And they actually call that the first step. Saying, okay, you're coming into these physical bodies with the purpose of expansion, of joy, of freedom, of growth. And you knew and you know that you were going to be met with a lot of diversity, with a lot of flavors to choose from, with a lot of experiences, with catalysts. And as you go about your day-to-day -day life and you encounter that catalyst, you encounter that experience, you encounter that diversity, that contrast. And through that contrast, you are going to, as they say, launch rockets of desire. Welcome everybody. It's good to see you. Being on a Zoom call myself really gives me a better opportunity to look at you all. This is wonderful. As opposed to being in the room. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay, cool. Okay. All right, let's begin. There's quite a lot I want to cover today. So brace yourselves. Probably uh, break the session in two portions and give you some opportunity to ask some questions for clarification as well. Like I said in my little theme post, for those of you who are familiar with Abraham Hicks teachings, a lot of this will be an explanation of that, at least from my view. So for those who are not familiar with that, they're most known for their slogan of the law of attraction. But again, there is a, there is a proper way to understand all this law stuff. And there is a, a very partial way to understand it. And for the most part, I think the real understanding of what, it, what is meant from their point of view is uh, missing. And it won't be only about that, but um, it will be a big component so I also want to credit uh, their teachings. Uh, so Esther Hicks, 
is the channeler of an entity or group consciousness that calls themselves Abraham. And um, yeah, and they address certain concepts that if properly understood, if understood in the true light of things, it can be incredibly powerful, freeing, liberating, and uh, make a lot of sense out of your life, as well as aid and assist us as a group, which is the next level of that application in the uh, manifestation of what I've sort of symbolically been referring to in the last few days as Shambhala. But it's not really a different word than, um, or it's not really a different concept than No Limit Society, um, or at least an aspect of No Limit Society, the manifestation of that going forward. Where to start? Okay. Well, let's start with one of the first understandings to remember that we often forget as we look at the world through our physical senses. Oh, by the way, I'm also going to bridge the whole enlightenment teachings with the with this particular component of that and to generate a greater blendedness or non-separation between the understanding of what we are beyond the individual and a timeless, eternal aspect of ourselves, which is what enlightenment is mostly focused on. Whereas empowerment, if you will, or expansion, manifestation, and so forth, um, as well as the individual being in a never-ending process of becoming. So is, is the, again, that balance between being and becoming, and how to understand that in a way where experientially it's no longer separate to you. It's actually the same one flow of being and becoming so first of all everything that we tend to forget this but everything is based on vibration or frequency we've all heard this before but again it's very tempting to forget this when you're eating an apple or when you're in an argument with your spouse or when you need to pick your kids up from school and you're half an hour late and there's lots of traffic is challenging to remind ourselves, to really see. We can remind ourselves conceptually, but often we don't even do that, right? Um, but it's another thing to really see it as frequency, to really remember that it is a vibrational game that's being played nonstop, moment to moment, breadcrumb by breadcrumb. So I want us to remember right now and feel into the fact that everything is frequency, literally everything is even manifestation is vibration. But manifestation has its roots in, let's say the causal body. It has a, a causal plane. First, it has a cause. It has a seed, it has an idea, it has a desire. This desire then translates into the subtle body or the subtle realm, and it becomes thought, it becomes inspiration, it becomes guidance, it becomes uh, signals, it becomes synchronicity, it becomes intuition and so forth. And then it transfers further into what we call the physical world, the physical plane. Typically that's what we call manifestation, but really all of these levels are manifestation. From the absolute's point of view, even awareness is a manifestation. Now it's not manifest in terms of what we see with our physical senses as physical objects. So we tend to not call it materialization or manifestation, but it is. Awareness is the first manifestation of the absolute reality. And then inside of that awareness, there is the infinite possibility, the infinite range of frequencies and vibrations and unique patterns of vibration and unique compositions and equations of vibration. And that's really what we're dealing with. And what we see as our manifest world is really only the very tip of the iceberg. It's the very end of the line, you could say. It's where the process of becoming finds its end, where I should say every process of becoming, every seed in the causal body that's then turned into inspiration, into movement, and that then becomes physical, 
when we see it with our physical senses, is the end of the line. It's as far as that manifestation is going to go. Does this make sense? Just nod your head if it makes sense so far. So we're talking about levels of subtlety, but they're all manifestations, starting with awareness. Then the causal body, which has seeds these ideas. They have seeds, ideas, um, intentions, desires, things you've learned, and so forth. And for most of us, this is very unconscious. Then it transfers into the subtle body, which is typically where it becomes subconscious, or for some of us, it becomes fairly conscious. The more aware we are of our thoughts, of our impressions, of our ideas, of our inspirations, of our feelings, of our emotions, the more you could say we are making the subconscious of the subtle body conscious, just like we're conscious typically, some people aren't even conscious of that, but of the physical world, right? So it's like that. We've, we're talking about levels of subtlety, but they're all manifestation and they're all the flow from the creator manifesting itself, expanding into itself, learning about itself, knowing about itself, expressing more of itself, expressing more possibilities to know itself and on and on and on and on it goes. So it would be kind of dumb to not observe that there is a process of becoming in addition to being. Would you agree? We could ignore that. We could say, okay, it doesn't really exist. And from one point of view, you'd be correct. But from almost every other point of view or level of experience, it would be kind of a denial of what's so obviously happening all the time, which is the process of becoming. So... Everything is frequency. Your every thought, your every action, your every observation has a vibration to it. And this is subtle. The level of vibration is a subtle level. It's subtler even than your thoughts. Thoughts are still manifestations of your vibrations. And on the level, that's why on the level of thoughts, sometimes it appears like we don't really have free will. Just like we don't really have free will about this pillow over here or this laptop over here. It's already what it appears to be. Thoughts are subtler, but they still have a little bit of that stale quality to them. If you observe your thoughts, you can realize, well, I'm not my thoughts. And it seems sometimes you don't really have any control over what appears in your subtle body, your mental body. Um, however, these are manifestations of your vibration as well. Whatever vibration you are tuned into, if you view yourself as an antenna for a second, your body, your mind as an antenna, like a radio that's tuned into some frequency, and whatever you're tuned into, you are also broadcasting. You're also radiating. There's no way around it. Whatever you're tuned into, whatever you take the shape of, whatever you take the frequency of, whatever you feel, whatever your state of being morphs itself around, whatever frequency it is matching, it is then also sending out, sending out a point of radiance, which also operates as a point of attraction. So here's kind of where we start getting into the law of attraction as Abraham Hicks or Abraham calls it. So the idea being that nothing really is assertion-based, but that everything is attraction-based. This is another way of saying you aren't really a doer, but you are a creator, or you are a radiator, or you are an attractor, or you are a being. But through your beingness, depending on what frequency you take on, your radiance, your point of attraction is going to shift. What you're sending out is going to shift. And based on what you're broadcasting, what you're radiating, your dreamscape, your landscape and consciousness is going to reflect that with the subtle body first, and then later on with the physical bodies. When I say body, I also in this case mean the plane, the physical plane. You could say, okay, you have a subtle body and there's a subtle plane of existence. And there's a physical body, but there's also a physical environment or plane of existence, which you call your world, the world of your senses and so forth. All right, so that's the basic sort of understanding conceptually. Now to get into the more important aspects of this. One thing I want to clarify is desire. Who here has experienced a desire arising? 
and the frequency of that feeling like bliss and feeling like expansion. Raise your hand. Where you have a desire, something happens and it, it generates a desire. And as soon as you have that desire, it lights you up, it expands you. You feel filled with bliss and with joy. Huh? Have you ever had that? Cool. And who's ever had a desire come up and it comes with contraction and it comes with pain and it comes with craving and it comes with frustration and it comes with perceiving it to not be here. Raise your hand. Right? So often when we talk about desire, that's what we're talking about. But I want to clarify that that's not actually what desire is. So desire is, true desire is bliss. It's literally you doing your job as an extension, as an expression of the one infinite creator. Uh, for now, you guys can lower the hands. That's only if you ask questions. Just raise your physical hand if I'm asking a question for feedback. But for now, I'm not answering questions yet. So the team can lower uh, Anki and Guinea's hand icons. Thank you. So uh, no questions yet. Um, what we often call desires, or when we say, okay, desire is the root of all pain, right? That's one of the spiritual statements, a lot in the enlightenment teaching. It's really a misunderstanding. And I've addressed this many times before in different ways, where I said, desire is not the problem. It's, it's the lack of beliefs. It's a lack of vision. It's the lack of possibility that you project that generates suffering. Desire isn't actually a source of suffering. Um, it's how much we oppose that desire that generates the suffering. So if you have a desire that's unrestricted by thoughts, that's unrestricted by limitation, that's unrestricted by lack of beliefs, that's unrestricted by what you believe is possible or not possible, reasonable, not reasonable, doable, not doable, what you believe you're worthy of or not worthy of. Before it reaches the domain of the mental body's self-doubt, before it's personalized, desire itself is actually the expansion of creation. It's actually fulfilling the core desire of the one infinite creator to know itself. That's what desire is. So there's a distinction to be made between desire and craving. And it's very important to keep those distinct. They're very distinct things. Craving is what occurs when you resist a desire. It's not desire itself. You have a desire, which can be an idea. It's an inspiration. It's inspired. Desire is inspired. Now, it can also be motivated by the contrast of your day-to-day -day experience. Let's say something happens. As Abraham often says, if you know what you don't want, you know what you do want. It's one of their statements. And they actually call that the first step. Saying, okay, you're coming into these physical bodies with the purpose of expansion, of joy, of freedom, of growth. And you knew and you know that you were going to be met with a lot of diversity, with a lot of flavors to choose from, with a lot of experiences, with catalyst. And as you go about your day-to-day -day life and you encounter that catalyst, you encounter that experience, you encounter that diversity, that contrast. And through that contrast, you are going to, as they say, launch rockets of desire. It's one of their other statements. So as you know what you don't, as you know what you don't want, you know what you do want. And another way of saying, when you know what does not resonate, what's not why you're here, you also begin to know why you are here. So it's also a clarification. Every time you launch a true inspired desire, it's also a clarification of why you're here and who you are and who you are meant to become. What is your process of becoming? What is, in a sense, in your blueprint? What was your intention before you came into these physical vehicles? What was slash is your intention for being here? And through the contrast, you sift through that, through your day-to-day -day experiences, and you become clearer and clearer and clearer on what it is that you are, who it is that you are, who you are here to become, and what would expand upon the universe in the most glorious possible way? What would expand upon the one infinite creator's desire to know itself in a way that's uniquely channeled through your unique fractal of this infinite creation? So desires need to be understood and valued in a new light if we want to take this to the next level, if we want to 
take our creatorship to the next level, if we want to take our self-knowledge to the next level. So far, does this make sense? Does not, if it makes sense. All right. So ironically, okay, suffering actually happens when you don't act on your desires. And when you don't act on your desires, it's not even so much about acting on them. It's more about aligning with them, agreeing with them or not agreeing with them. When you disagree with your own desires, when you put lack beliefs in its way, this is when you contract. This is when you cut yourself off from your true self. This is when the emotional guidance system starts kicking in, letting you know uh, 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 you're believing something that your inner being doesn't agree with. You're agreeing with something. You're perceiving something in a way that God doesn't perceive in that way. And your unique blueprint doesn't match up with in that way. So when you do that, when you contract, which is the result of contradicting yourself, contradicting your own desire for expansion, your own desire for desire, then that contraction leads to emotional suffering catalyst. And if that is not properly addressed quickly enough, it turns into frustration, it turns into depression, it turns into cravings. So cravings are desires that you've disagreed with that then turn into cravings. So cravings are like the evil little brother, if you will, or sister of desire. It's because we've distorted desire. So desire plus lack and limitation breeds a whole new category of desire, which would be more accurately called cravings. This is make sense. When you contradict your inner flow, your own energy, the desire to expand, the desire to create, the desire to know more of who you are, the desire to become. If you contradict this powerful flow that you came here with, that flow powerful enough to give birth to you, if you contradict that with societal ideas, with limiting beliefs, with self-esteem issues, then that's going to produce this stinky little pond of non-flow where you're not in alignment with this ever forward expanding movement of creation. And then the result is you're going to be filled with cravings. Those are distracting. Those are painful. Those are unfulfilled desires. But it really all begins when you contradict what you want. When you mistrust what you desire. When you put into your own pathway ideas of limitation or unworthiness. That's when the emotional guidance system kicks in, doesn't it? Right away. So I want us to reappreciate desire as the blissful energy of expansion of the creator coming up with an idea about itself through you, through your experience with the contrast of everyday life. And in contact with that contrast, it launches a new idea it, that literally energetically immediately, that's already the expansion of the universe right there. When you figure out what you want, when you figure out what's true for you, when you figure out what you desire, when you figure out why you're here, even if it's just a small moment, something happens, you don't like it. And therefore, mm, you're producing more of what you do want. You're producing, you're adding to that field, to that vortex, as they call it. The clarity, the statement, the declaration of your expansion. You are expanding through knowing what you don't want and therefore automatically knowing what you do want, even if it's not fully conscious. So that, that adds to this um, vortex. And it actually, a couple of days ago, I went deeply into this and I actually had direct experience of and as the vortex, as they call it. So not just hypothetically or conceptually or intellectually, or even as an intuition, but I actually was what they call the vortex. And, but I'll get to that in a little bit. But basically you cannot, you cannot contradict this energy uh, unless you wanna suffer, unless that's your idea of expansion going against everything. But even that is part of the expansion. There's literally nothing you could do that could go against this movement. There's literally nothing you could do that could go against this flow. It, it, all you can ever do is add to the expansion, which is another way of saying you cannot make any mistakes. Not really, you know? And it's also another way of saying that all is well. It's a more exciting way of understanding that all is well. Not just like, oh, okay, I have to settle for less than what my expansion truly wants. 
and I'm going to call that all as well. That's okay. It's actually different than that. It's much more exciting. It's much more energetic and potent. It's much bigger than that. All as well actually means there's literally nothing right now that you could not be adding to the expansion of the one infinite creator. Literally nothing. There's nothing you could think right now that you could do. Even your contradictions to yourself, to your own inner flow, are adding to the expansion of the universe. They're adding to the points of view that the creator has of itself. You are constantly adding to the expansion. From this point of view, also, nothing could ever go wrong. You see, nothing could ever go wrong because there's no exception to everything being added to the swirling, expansive expansion of the one infinite creator's knowledge of itself. So I mean that's power you can't buy my friends. If you're tapped into that that's faith. It's another way of saying faith. And what I often call faith Abraham tends to call the receptive mode. So let me try to draw this a little bit for you guys. This is my portable whiteboard. For now, it'll have to do. This is a very rude, um, not rude, sorry, crude. <laughs> maybe it's rude too, I don't know. A very crude drawing for now. Maybe we can optimize it later on, but just to give you an initial visual idea. That's too crude, let me start over. Right. So this is the, this is you right now in your physical bodies, which includes your mental body and so forth. So it's, it's more than just physical, but this is you as a mind, body, spirit complex, let's say. This you this you is radiating something you have, um, as they call it, you have a point of attraction. You have a point of radiance. You have a certain frequency uh, that you're constantly sending out right now. You're sending it out right now. You're of a certain vibration that you're sending out and it's determining the, in what fashion, in what way, in what patterns, the energy of your dreamscape inside of your consciousness is appearing as, as flowing as how it's showing up. Now, when they say get into the receptive mode, so you are here, you're bumping into things, you're bumping into people, you're bumping into things and wants and so forth. And out of this contrast, out of this diversity, you are producing, whether consciously or unconsciously, for the most part unconsciously, and sometimes consciously or deliberately, you are producing desire. You're adding to forward movement. You're adding to the expansion of the ideas of the creator that it can come up with about itself. 
Now, all that, everything you're doing all the time, your desires as they are birthed, or as they say, when you're launching rockets of desire, they are all added to what they call your vortex. It's a vibrational reality. And it is assimilated there and it's instantly given, it's instantly manifested. Meaning whatever you truly desire in any moment is instantly assimilated here. It's instantly taken care of. It's instantly manifest because this is a timeless realm from our point of view, compared to our point of view. It's a timeless realm. It's ever expanding, but it doesn't operate in time. It doesn't operate through physical laws and so forth. So Abraham often says, ask and it is given. Not ask and you shall receive, but ask and it is given instantly, immediately. Whatever you're asking for is instantly given. However, from this point of view, you're not going to experience that immediately. You're not going to experience what you've just been adding here and what's been fully assimilated for you instantaneously by this infinite intelligence. Perfectly assimilated. You have a desire, boom, it's perfectly assimilated. It's right there. It's a new vision the creator has of itself. And it's exciting. That's why it is a desire. It's a desire because it's calling you forth towards that now. You've birthed an idea, you've birthed a desire, and this desire, this magnetism, this excitement is now calling you into becoming that. You've birthed a new idea on behalf of the creator of what it could be. And you are now adding that here to your magnetic true north. And that magnetic true north is now going to pull on you. It's now going to call you into becoming that. You're already perfect being. This is already, it's already perfectly established right there. But now there is that process of becoming it. And this is where the cravings come in. So you've launched a desire that felt exciting to you the moment it, it arose for you. It felt clear. It felt like, that's what I want. That's who I am. That's what I'm here to become. But since it's here and it doesn't show up immediately around us to our physical senses, we start producing lack beliefs. We start resisting this pulling forward. We start contradicting that true desire, that magnetism. Does this make sense? That is the contraction. That is the emotional guidance system. As soon as we contradict what we've put in our vortex, as they call it, and I don't mind calling it that for the session, just to keep it clear. So let's call this vibrational reality your vortex. And when you agree to that, when you start seeing life in ways that are in alignment with what's here for you, you start to flow, you start to feel that flow, you start to feel blissful, you start to feel the expansion, you start to feel the becoming in process of becoming. And it's exciting and it's delicious and it's blissful and it's juicy and it's powerful and it's freeing and it's liberating and it's expressive. So when you contradict it though, as you know, I've talked about the emotional guidance system many times in different contexts, then you're keeping yourself from what, from the expansion you created. You're saying, okay, yes, I've added to creation. I've added to the ways in which the universe can know itself, but now I'm not going to become that. I'm going to keep myself separate from that. I'm going to keep myself tight and controlled and, and squeezed off from that. So I'm not going to allow what I've created. I'm not going to allow what I've added to the universe. And so when they say get into the receptive mode, that's then the next step. So they have a few steps as well. So the first step is contrast. Through contrast, you birth desires. You birth who you want to be. So by knowing what you don't want, immediately, whoop, you are pinging. You're sending a rocket of desires, they say, into this vortex. And it's perfectly given. That's step two. It's given instantly. You ask, you desire, and it is given. Step two. You don't do anything with that. That's just the mechanics of infinite intelligence. The moment... Because you are free agent of the creator, remember? So whatever you decide, whatever you determine is best, whatever you come up with, whatever desire is birthed through your experience on behalf of the creator, having an experience through you, it's immediately added to the field of timeless infinite intelligence. And now it's assimilated in this vibrational reality called the vortex, or they call it the vortex. And it's right there for you. It's right there. It's accomplished. Whatever you truly desire is right there. It's accomplished. Now, the third step then is to get into the receptive mode, which, and again, I can come up with a better drawing, but just for now, it's kind of like the open crown chakra in some ways, you could say. It's like going to this state of reality or experience where you are not contradicting anything with your thoughts. 
you're not contradicting what you've just determined is true about reality. You're not contradicting how you just expanded upon creation. You're not contradicting your own desire that's now out of this timeless point of view, calling you forward into becoming that on all levels, also in the manifest world. So if you're able to be more and more and more receptive, meaning less and less and less insistent, less and less and less arrogant with your thoughts in limitation and what you're worthy of and so forth, anytime you get into receptive mode, then everything that's happening here can accelerate to become that which you have initiated. Does that make sense? Because you're receptive, because you allow your entire reality to shape shift, basically. You allow time and space to shape shift on your behalf, because you're not insisting that this is what's true. You're not focused too much on the tree that already is. You're not focused too much on the world as it already is. You're focused much more on being receptive to what is in this vibrational reality, already assimilated, what you desire, what's calling you forth into becoming. And this is, again, where it's important to remember that all this is frequency-based. The world as you know it is a vibration. This tree over here is a vibration. The relationships in your life are frequencies. Everything has a vibration. And it's matching the vibration that you're sending out here. And the more you get to be in that receptive state, or the closer you get to being in that calm, confident, freed up place where limitation and contradiction and arguments cease. And this is where enlightenment comes in as well, because it's very much matches that receptive mode. Then, then everything about your causal, subtle, and physical bodies can start to reshape themselves. And they become, they literally become what you've initiated when you told reality what it is you desire based on what you experience, which was immediately given, immediately created, immediately assimilated, immediately established in the most intelligent possible way, knowing all the components of the universe at play. So now it's your job, if you will, if you want to be happy, if you want to feel the flow of uninterrupted bliss as much as you can and not contradict it and ooh, ooh, cause the emotional guidance system to bump up against your resistance. If you want to become unrestricted, unresisted, that's why desires that are unresisted are blissful. Whereas desires that are resisted is literally you going against the calling yourself forth into becoming. And so now you're creating ideas and obstacles that are of a vibration that don't match what you say you are that don't match what you say you have become. The moment you desire something, you have become that. You have become that desire. You've become that version of creation. You've become that expansion of the one infinite creator. That's now your duty. That's now your honor. That's now who you are because that's what you said. So someone punched you in the face and you knew in that moment, I want an easeful existence. I want a harmonious existence because it didn't feel good. In that moment, you became a harmonious existence, free of violence. But now, if you keep observing, if you keep tuning your vibration to all the violence in the world, you're going to keep attracting, creating that reality, and you're going to keep yourself away from what you say you have become. So you're actually falling short on your duty slash honor to stay true to your word. Every desire you launch is a word. So then in the, in the world of honor and duty, it's your duty and honor to be true to what you've become and not pretend like you're something else. And the way to do that is to adjust your frequency to what's now already established, what you have already become in the timeless vibrational reality and align with that so that it can begin to reshape your manifest reality in a way that matches what you are. So a couple for several reasons, I felt like digging into these teachings again over the last couple of weeks, um, it's been very helpful for our mission as it's been calling us forward. And we've been doing this with a group. Um, so as I tuned into this more and more and more, I reached a certain culmination a couple of days ago where for the most part, I had been, I had been exercising this and distilling this from the point of view of more of a bubble reality of what it's like to be a person, because that's one of the most helpful ways to dig into something because that's what everyone's doing. And that's how to distill teachings is to enter that bubble. So we reached a certain culmination in our process, in our vibrational journey, where suddenly this bubble opened up for me. And I was in this receptive mode, but it's, it's kind of beyond even the receptive mode. It's, it's like the ultimate receptive mode, which mimics 
uh, higher states of awareness and enlightenment, where there is just this indescribable calm, vast spaciousness, a sense of infinity, and nothing really seems solid or to register or to affect anything. It's like this constant timeless boom. Now, it felt calm, and it actually felt in some ways less exciting, less exciting than taking on this role and launching a rocket of desire and attuning to that, tuning to that possibility. There was more excitement in that. Whereas here, there was like a perfect calm about the whole thing. And, but, in, but I knew it wasn't the end result. So as I stayed tuned into this calm state in relationship to this, which I've been distilling, something happened, which is it opened up like a back door. It was similar to going into the absolute or going into a higher state of consciousness. And um, I started becoming the vortex itself. And and uh, it allowed me to understand this particular paradigm of teaching, like at a whole other level. Um, basically, I was chilling with Abraham directly, um, as this is what they are. So it was pretty cool. They're a pretty cool breed. Uh, <laughs> And I can't, as with all these things that transcend the mind and the body and the senses, it's uh, impossible to describe accurately. But it is like an infinite cosmic space of perfect well being, filled with a swirling, which is now why I understand why they actually call it the vortex. Um, it's like it, the closest is maybe a picture of a fairly fast moving galaxy, like a swirling galaxy. So it is very much again, like a vortex, but it's like a, it's like a vortex of infinite intelligence. And it, it's the ongoing, basically it's the ongoing unstoppable expansion of the creator self knowledge, like the endless infinite expansion of the creator's knowledge and the symbolism of its movement is that it can never stop rotating. It can never stop expanding. It doesn't matter what gets added. It cannot stop expanding. I just can't. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter how hard you oppose it. It doesn't matter how much you keep yourself from your bliss, how much you ignore the emotional guidance system and just suffer through life with your own insistence. It doesn't matter. All of that is expanding the creator. And all of that is, it's, there's no opposition here. There's no opposition. There's no opposing ideas possible. So it's like oneness in movement. It's like oneness in motion. It's oneness in expansion. And if you can tap into that, first of all, you're going to experience the great bliss of this particular angle into enlightenment slash empowerment. Same thing really from this point of view or expansion and timelessness or being and becoming. And it gives the person, although it's transcendent to the person, but you could say it gives the person a sense of confidence or faith or conviction that transcends all logic, that transcends all reasoning, that transcends all physical phenomena, that transcends all other laws, universal laws and so forth. And um, yeah, it's literally like the whole universe is working on your behalf. Like, and because there's no distinction, there's no separation. It's all, yeah, I can't really explain it. Maybe more words will come to me as I uh, tune into this more from this particular angle. But um, not but. And the power that is present there, it's just complete. It's complete power. It's complete power. And there's no contradictions. It's not possible to contradict this. It's not even possible to consider that there could be a contradiction. Like even to say no contradiction exists there is already too much because there is not even that awareness. 
that there could be such a thing as contradiction. It just doesn't even exist there. And if we can tap into that, or at least get receptive to that, become more receptive to that, and, and on based on faith, allow this to operate through us. And if we start doing this as a group, and we start plugging this into our collective desire for the world that we're creating, for the expansion that has been generated by millions of people through their contrast, there's millions, if not billions of people that know what they are wanting. And it's not warfare. It's not this and that, you know, regulation. It's not the things that we observe in our physical world as it starts to collapse into chaos. But through that chaos, the chaos is beautiful. It's the expansion, you see. Without it, there wouldn't be this expansion. It's like rapid acceleration of this vortex. We're rapidly expanding upon what's possible and what the creator can become and how it can know itself. And all this power of this collective, because this vortex was also collective. It wasn't just my personal vortex. Um, it was a collective vortex. And so this galaxy of infinite intelligence that's just perfectly organized, like perfect knowledge, perfect timing, all the components are there, are assimilated immediately. There's no limitation. There's no time. There's only one movement and it's expansion. Even contraction of the universe at the end of its current theme is part of the expansion. There's no expansion and contraction. Contraction back into the one infinite creator, that reabsorption is simply the culmination point of that expansion. And it's births yet another expansion. But anyway, to keep it more here now, um, if we can plug into this and if we can train ourselves to be connected to this, if we can start perceiving it, and maybe even have some direct glimpses of it, like I did, if more people can access this, uh, there's literally nothing we cannot do. I'll tell you that much. And the there will be a rapid acceleration in terms of the manifestation of Shambhala, at least with those that are magnetized towards that. And then it will spill out into outer peripheries where the vibration is less strong, but it still carries that frequency where other people can catch up. It's like, you know, catching the, catching the final boat. And it sounds a little dramatic, but um, it, they can follow the breadcrumb trail at their own pacing and, and still get to that symbolic Shambhala, which is simply a harmonized collective existence on planet Earth. And there's a rapid acceleration happening in the contrast that's being produced in this world as we speak. There's lots of rockets of desire being launched right now into the vortex. There's lots of new data and lots of new expansion that's happening. So also try not to focus too much on the physical stuff because just see it as giving birth to rapid expansion. It's actually a positive thing. If you can stay attuned to that and keep your positive interpretation of it, your holistic interpretation of it clear, and you can swirl with the swirling vortex, you can speed up in that way, and your materialized world can start to reflect that very quickly. I'll get into some of the practicalities also of how to practice this with your individual life and desires right now where you're at and how it can move closer and closer towards this potential. All right, but you all understand that desires are naturally pure and holistic. They are actually the expansion of the creator. They are you fulfilling your duty, which is producing expansion. Desires equal expansion. Every time you gain a new desire, a new initiative, a new insight, a new, new state of clarity about who you are or what you want, that is an expansion on the exploration that the one's having with itself right now. Do you get that? Does this make sense? So your desires are important in that sense, or they're valuable. Um, and you got to distinguish them from your cravings, which are the result, the stale, slow moving result of your own resistance to what you desire, your own resistant thinking, your own obstructions, your own insistence. 
your own disagreement. You're disagreeing with your own expansion, what you've just expanded. And therefore you keep producing the resistance and it seems to not work out. And it seems like desires are the cause of all suffering, but actually it's your insistence and your lack beliefs. So that's something to really understand. Okay, the following segment will be about what is the present, past and the future? How does that play into this? In a different way, different than what you might be expecting when I say that. Um, there's, so this is at a more practical level, what you're dealing with on your day-to-day -day experience with your physical senses and how you deal with that and so forth. What is manifest to you right now? Right, what's around you right now? The seemingly physical world that you're perceiving with your apparently physical senses, which is all frequency, it's all interpretation, it's all transmission. That which you see, which is also called that which is, right? That which is now present, that which is now manifest, actually is the past. And for those of you who have followed my work for longer, you've heard me talk about this, especially like five years ago or so in the Boulder meetings, I talked about this more than I do recently. But what is, what is, okay, what is what is actually? Not talking about the isness itself, not talking about the I amness, but talking about the manifestation, the form of what is, right? And this is also why I say mindfulness can only go so far if it sticks to that level of observe the flame or observe what's happening through your nostrils or observe that da, da, da. it has its uses but being mindful of the room that you're in is only going to get you so far vibrationally into in terms of your expansion of consciousness and your expansion of creation um because what is is actually the past what is is old news because what is is the tip of the iceberg it's the very last portion it's the end of the stick of your desire so what you're perce perceiving right now in your physical environment is old news in terms of it being a manifestation again i'm not talking about the grace and the love and the perfection that you can experience in it but i'm talking when you're referencing the objects of your life the conditions of your life the conditions of the world it's old news you're actually focusing on the past so let's not make the mistake by thinking that it is more enlightened to focus on what is because it's actually very detrimental to focus excessively on what is. The only use of focusing on what is is to know what you want based on it, based off of it, is to launch a new expansion. So it's actually more enlightened in some ways to dislike what is than it is to enjoy what is. Because if you're enjoying what is, now don't get me wrong here, I'm just kind of playing with words, being silly, but in one way of looking at it, if you're enjoying or indulging what is, and you're taking it to be real, and you're observing it all the time, and you're focused on it, and you're referencing it as a real thing, if you're being present with what is, you're actually stuck in the past. And you're not following up, you're not keeping up with your own expansion. Whereas if you're dissatisfied with what is, it's a much more powerful place to be at. You see? Because in that frustration, you are birthing a new idea into the one infinite vortex. And it's instantly given and assimilated. It's now part of who you are. You've become that vibrationally. Now it's your duty as a person, so to speak, to adjust to that, to align to that, to let go of everything that's not that, to say yes to that. And the way to say yes to that is to not indulge in what is. Don't fact check your desires. All right, remember that one. Stop fact checking your desires because this is where craving comes in. Frustration, emotional guidance system kicks in because you're unhappy. Every time you fact check your desires, you feel a lowering of your frequency. You can try it right now. Think about something exciting, something that personally excites you. Be a little selfish for this exercise. Something you would really like, something that would really be great for you. Like that would make you feel like alive and expanded and like, oh, that's exciting. I want to go there. I want to do this. I want to be that. I want to have this. I want to be in that relationship. I want to have this project or whatever it is. Feel into that something. And maybe you suppressed it a little bit, but just unsuppress it for this exercise. If you were to, if you could be completely selfish right now 
what would be really just really great like would really light you up if you're honest something at least something fun think of something like relatively exciting but maybe even something big that you've suppressed with so many ideas that you don't even access it as possible right now but what if everything was possible what if nothing was selfish what if all you could ever do is expend upon the one infinite creator and what if your unique desire is the most the least resistant way to actually stream into that expansion of the one infinite creator and fulfill your duty what then would you like so feel into that and then fact check your desire and see how you feel. Meaning, could this be? Do I deserve it? Uh, how is this possible? Can I do this by myself? Do I have the skills to do it? What will people think of me when I do it? This is not the way the world works. It's not possible within that time frame. That's fact checking your desire. Watch what it does to your vibration. It goes down, no? Maybe now it goes up because you're seeing this as an insight. So it's like, oh yeah, fuck. So part of it goes up because you're getting a new insight here that liberates you. But you get what I'm saying. In that moment, every time you're like, oh, okay, you're settling for less. It's not possible. It's not doable. Maybe you think it's not respectful or it's not kind, which of course there's something to consider in that realm. But look at, look at the limit. As soon as limitation comes in, <laughs> You stop performing your duty and your honor of becoming what you say you have become at the highest level. You are contradicting the expansion of the universe. And even that's not contradicting the expansion of the universe. Even that expands on the universe. So you're really fucked. All you can do is expand upon the universe. But you can do this being joyful and exuberant and ecstatic and creating the things that resonate for you and getting the fruits of your seeds and experiencing that and enjoying that and expanding further upon that. Or you can stay where you're at and keep yourself small and settle for less and be a really nice and kind person um, because that's the payoff, right? At least you're really nice and kind and humble. That's the best thing in a frustrated, craving-like state. At least you're a really nice person. At least you can show that to the world and, and justify your lack of honor and duty and becoming who you say you've become. So you can resist the entire desire of the creator to know itself more fully. And then at least you can claim that you're really nice and humble and respectful and you don't need much. <laughs> you think the creator ever thinks I don't need much? Fuck no. This swirling galaxy of infinite possibilities that cannot help but desire more of itself. God is a greedy motherfucker, my friends. It's absolutely greedy. Think about it. It's crazy. It's greedy. It's unrealistic. It does all the things you want to do, but don't. And yet you are that. So you're playing a role here. Unrestricted desire is bliss. And what happens when you're in bliss? You're connected. What happens when you're connected? You feel the power of the whole universe swirling inside you. What happens when you feel the power of the whole universe swirling inside you? You feel at one with everything. What happens when you feel at one with everything? You naturally exude love and forgiveness and unconditionality because you don't need anything from anyone. All the problems that we're trying to fix with meditation and spirituality are the result of you restricting your desires, of you disagreeing, with what you're built to become. All of it, all your problems, all the stinky little ponds that you then try to kind of monk-like Buddhist monastery cell manage respectfully with, with equanimity, which is another word for suppression in most people's cases. Most equanimous persons are actually just suppressed as fuck and they've gotten really tolerable about that. You're suppressing the universe's expansion, or you're trying to, you're not succeeding. That's why I say you're fucked. You're, you're as greedy as God is. You're as selfish as God is. You're as crazy as God is. You're as expansive as God is. You're as fast moving as God is. Anything less than that, that you accept is just a disagreement with the truth. That's why it feels bad. And then you need mindfulness to manage feeling bad and to become more tolerable of feeling bad but it's you going against the entire guidance system of the universe. 
So fuck it. Be crazy. Be delusional. God is the most delusional. It's the most delusional. Everything is delusion. It's just about picking yours, you know? Do you want a stale sort of society, societally accepted version of delusion? Do you want the crazy that's happening in the world right now? Or do you want the crazy of manifesting Shambhala with a bunch of crazy people? You know, choose your delusion. It's all delusion. It's all illusion. So choose yours. Don't restrict it. Go with the flow. Allow this vortex to move you. Allow this ever-expanding flow to enter into your body, into your mind, into your actions, into your inspiration. Agree with your expansion. Stop disagreeing with your expansion. It's why you're here. Fun, huh? All right, so the present is the past. And the future is actually the present. Because, and I've called this future presence in the past, and I'll call it that again, because I think it's a fitting term. So future hyphenation, hyphen uh, presence, future presence. To live in future presence instead of to living in the facts of what is. And there's a real art to this, to ignoring and some courage required. Ignoring the facts doesn't mean you oppose the facts because that would still be taking the facts to be real. And that's where opposition comes in and that's where resistance comes in and that's where conflict comes in and that's where conditional love comes in and that's where trying to demand respect comes in. All that resistant energy is the result of still going by the facts. But if someone tells you something like, oh, you can never do that. If you don't pay attention to the facts, or if, if life seems to de demonstrate to you, if you have a day two challenge and there's a situation like, oh, fuck, I really thought I could do this. I was so lit up by this new initiative, this new desire, but I have kids. Or, but I don't have money in my bank account. Or, but what will people think of me? Anytime you go there, again, watch what your frequency does. Watch what you're now going to perpetuate and attract and generate. You're not helping. You're resisting. You're struggling. But if you're unrestricted, if you're unresisted, then there is no need for you to impose on anyone else or to try to prove the world wrong or to try to prove the facts wrong. There's simply no need because you're not focused at that level of what is. You're not fact checking your desire. You stay true to your desire, which is what's calling you forth. You've already had the desire or a lot of them. You're going to birth new ones, but you have a lot of expansions that are already awaiting you. So now you just want to stay true to that which you've desired into being. And now you want to align to that. And if someone tells you, no, you can't, there's no reason for you to say, yes, I can. Nor is there a reason for you to believe, oh, you're right, I can. Both of these are the dualities that come with fact-checking based on what is. But what is has absolutely no power. Nothing in physical reality has any power to prevent your imagination, to prevent you, you from living in future presence. And I say imagination. I don't just mean like, oh, imagine this, imagine that. Although that's a component of it. But I mean, being in that state of conviction, of being connected to what you've already launched into this vibrational reality and aligning to that, being staying true to that. It's another way of saying, have faith. Someone tells you no, or something in your conditions of your reality appear to say, no, you can't, or no, you shouldn't, or no, this or that, whatever the no or limitation is that's testing you. If you can keep focused vibrationally, and what you know excites you, and you can stay attuned to that, now you're going to really transform these conditions as they meet you one by one, as they're trying to kind of test your new resolve, your new intention, your new expansion. They're kind of like ways to allow yourself to really choose. Are you sure you want the next level? Are you sure you want to speed up? Are you sure you want to swirl around like a crazy person? Or very clear and calm and confident crazy person, by the way. Or do you want to submit to physical reality? Submit to the facts and interpretations you have at that level, which is the level that birthed the desire. But now you're staying true vibrationally. You're staying true. You keep observing the very thing that caused the expansion. But you got to let go of the condition that caused the expansion. And now you got to go with the expansion, which means you have to ignore what is and live in the future presence of your conviction, of your faith, of your vibrational reality, tune into your vortex, be in that receptive mode, be meditative, be creative, be convinced, be, be in confidence.
which means you have to let go of the tempting habit to, again, fact check not only your desires, but also fact check if they're happening or not, or if you're worthy of them or not, or if they're manifesting yet or not. Like not be so dependent on the physical senses. Because it doesn't matter what's happening to the physical senses. It doesn't mean that what you've desired hasn't already been created, because it has. What you expanded into, the expansion was immediately given. Ask and it is given. If you stay true to that, if you have faith, then it shall manifest also to the physical senses. And this gives you so much more energy to be naturally in tune with appreciating all of creation, feeling the oneness of it, the harmony of it. It's very difficult to attain a state of oneness in your meditations if you're coming from a place of restricting yourself, your expansion, of being unnatural, basically. It's an unnatural way of being. So you have all these limiting ideas and all these arguments with your own expansion, the things you set you have become vibrationally going against that and then trying to mitigate feeling bad with meditation and trying to reach oneness and the pure I am and so forth, but without a holistic energy flow is very difficult. It's very difficult. Whereas if you're naturally expensive, you're naturally exuberant and you're not just focused on getting the Ferrari, you know, you you've matured beyond that. You understand it's about raising your state of being. It's about becoming what you're meant to become your blueprint, your expansion, and adding to the expansion of the creator. It's about the never-ending journey of expansion. And if you can align to that, if you can begin to agree with that, give yourself permission to agree with that flow, then suddenly you have so much energy. You've got so much clarity naturally coming to you because you're attuned. You're resonating with the whole of the universe, the wholeness. Then your meditations will come easy. They'll be energized. They'll be clear. There can be thoughts or no thoughts. doesn't even matter. Your thoughts will be of the highest nature. You'll be producing new universes somewhere. You won't be thinking, you'll be listening. It'll just be happening. It's source thinking through you. It's just a vortex. Your mind starts to become the vortex. The vortex is your mind. So now every action is inspired. It's not doership. It's not from a state of resistance. Now as a physical body, I'm going to try to make a difference or control things. There's no need to control anything. Only if you agree to the facts, then you, the only way to be happy is to control things. But if you're aligned, and you all know this, from the moments of alignment, of exuberance, of bliss, of joy, of expansion, you have no desire to control anything or anyone. Because there's no doubt, because you're not fact-checking anything. It feels kind of like you're disconnected from the world, but in the most pleasant kind of way. You feel so clear and stable in yourself, not in the world, but in yourself. And the world doesn't even really appear anymore. And in the enlightenment teachings, when we say things like, you know, if you go deeply enough into the I or the I am or the pure awareness, the world starts to disappear or there is no world even, or in the absolute, there is no universe whatsoever. There's not even a creation. When we say things like that, it very much matches up with living in future presence, becoming subtler and subtler in your frequency, in your faith and allowing, being in agreement with the universe more and more Will you just experience the expansion, the subtlety, the calm, the peace, the love, the joy, the exuberance of that expansion, and less and less will you see a world? You stop agreeing with the world. You stop agreeing with other people, which are just echoes of your own mind, your own conditioning. And then you're free. Then you're flying high. And from your flying high, as Ra says to the disciplined seeker, everything is free and open. Meaning, asking it is given. Have a question and the answer shall be there instantly. Everything is open and free to the disciplined personality. What does that mean in this context? It means you care more about your frequency than you care about the facts of this world. That simple. Don't let physical reality distract you. It has absolutely no power to stop your future presence. Absolutely no power.
So that's one step as you engage with your physical life is to not focus on the facts. Focus on what you want, truly want, like be in that energy. Be in the energy of what you desire, what you are in truth, again, from a timeless vibrational point of view, from being here, I can tell you that that is already who you are. It's already who you are. So you, there's no justification needed, you see. There's no path needed. You don't need a path. You don't need a series of explanations to get here. You are that. You have become that. The moment you knew what you wanted because you knew what you didn't want, for instance. Or the moment you had a meditation and you connected to your source, to your blueprint, and it gave birth to this inspired feeling, this vision, this frequency that expanded upon the ways that the creator can know itself. And through your particular vehicle, through your particular participation as a co-creator, instantly you became that. You are that. So you see, there's nothing in this physical reality, no matter how how ancient or old or real it seems to be that has anything to do with who you've become unless you agree to this, but watch how you feel when you do that. Watch what happens. Your frequency tanks. Ooh. You tell me if that's any good, if that's spiritual, then by all means, go ahead. Be enlightened like that. Be enlightened, resisting the universe, resisting why you're here. Be a really nice person. By all means, be really careful, mindful, composed, zen. Be really zen. Go ahead. Be miserable for the rest of your life. Go ahead. Oppose God. Oppose the core intention that produced this entire illusion to begin with. If you can blend this all with the understanding of the law of one, if you can blend the law of one with the law of attraction, so to speak, it's not even my favorite term for that law per se, but you know what I mean by it. So the law of one and the law of attraction, basically what I've just been talking about. If you blend those two, if you understand their harmony, then both can accelerate in your experience, in your realization of them. Feel the bliss of your birthright. Go ahead, I'll wait. Allow in the bliss of your birthright. You all know the moment you accept who you really are, things start to flow, things start to accelerate. Things start to show up for you that you need, that you want. It all starts flowing because you're co cooperating with the expansion you created on behalf of the creator. So allow in your birthright, which is to produce expansion and then to live it, to become it. Believe in your desires. So you don't have to produce cravings or lack beliefs. I'll go into the vortex for a second and I'll beam it to you guys from place of no time and no space. And uh, perhaps you can receive this amplification because also from this place, it's known that you can reach anyone at any time from any place, anywhere. There's no limitations like that.
everything you want is already here. Just line up with it and you'll feel it instantly, which is the first step of the manifestation is the feeling of it being already accomplished. It's already who you are, being true to it, living true to it, allowing it, believing it is true is the first manifestation. And watch how your body responds instantly. Watch how the healing happens. Watch how the energy centers open up. Watch how radiant you become. Then your manifest world will follow. No more self-contradiction, my friend. There is no such thing. There's only one, there's only one direction that this whole thing can move into, and it's forward. Only one direction. You cannot go backwards. You cannot resist. Even resistance is moving forwards. It's producing new desires, new expansion. Your resistance is producing expansion. And your expansion is producing expansion. There's only one direction that all of this is headed into. Feel the difference between tuning your antenna to this idea of the world out there and watch what it does to your mind and your attention, where it goes. It feels like it's projecting outward. It's going away from your body. It's going away from your center. It's going away from your consciousness. And it's producing the sense of a real world out there every time you think about the real world or what you call the real world. Every time you think about the facts, every time you consider the conditions that are around you, Every time you think about what's on the news or what's out happening there on Facebook or what your friend said about you, every time you reference the other world, watch what it does to your frequency. It lowers your vibration. It makes you literally, your attention exits your sense of self and it produces a sense of a real world around you. Watch for that and then pull it back Do the opposite. Go back within, close off your senses for a moment, stop the senses, so to speak, withdraw from the senses. Get your attention back to the beingness, the I amness, and then allow in the expansion that you know there's no other way for the expansion but to occur. Go back to that place of faith where you know your desires are somehow already fulfilled, what you truly want is already here for you. And then watch what happens to your frequency. Get that distinction between referencing the world and the facts of what is versus ignoring it and staying in that more vibrational domain, that subtler domain of your imagination, of your future presence, of what you know is to be, of what you know you really are beyond the illusion, beyond the veils, beyond people's opinions, beyond even your own opinions, and connect to that higher field. And then starts more and more spending more and more attention in that vibrational realm of natural optimism, natural sort of dreamlike freedom, natural like forward expansion, natural exuberance and excitement, natural beingness, I amness, love for this moment, but not, not referencing the objects or the facts. There's no facts, you see. This moment contains love for sure, and but access that love, but not the facts. The facts are illusory. They're made up and they lower your frequency. Notice the love in them, and they allow in the expansion of what you know you're moving into, what you've truly become at a vibrational level. Tune into that, and watch it as your heart opens, and you start to commune with the Creator in a much more powerful way. And now the universe, the entire universe, starts acting on your behalf, because you are the Creator.
be a cooperative component of the universe's inevitable expansion. <laughs>